what's up my name is taken over here for troubleshoot and welcome back to another quick video in this video i'll be showing you how to set up a 1.18 minecraft fabric server in the description down below you'll find a link to a spigot and craft bucket video as well as other 1.18 videos i've done so to begin first of all you'll need to download fabric in the description down below you'll find a link to this website here all you have to do here is click download installer on the right hand side here to download the windows fabric installer on top of this, we'll also need the Fabric API, to which you'll find a link right over here. Click this link, and it'll take us across to CurseForge. On this page here, simply click Files at the very top, then scroll down a little bit, and make sure you download the latest release for 1.18. Fabric API 1.18. Download. After clicking Keep, if prompted, what we have to do is open up the installer. I'll click More Info, Run Anyway, and we'll now be installing the Fabric Server and Fabric Client. So on the client tab, I'll choose Minecraft 1.18, leave the loader version as the latest version, and basically everything else as is. Create profile on, and I'll click install. If you have more than one launcher installed, you'll see this here. You can choose either the Microsoft Store or the standalone, depending which launcher you have. I'll choose the Microsoft Store, as this is the one that I'm currently using. You can always click install and choose the other one as well. After installing the client, head across to the server tab at the very top and we'll change the install location here to a folder that we have in a more memorable place, such as a folder on our desktop here, which I'll call Fabric 1.18. I'll simply open the folder and at the very top, I'll copy this address. Then Control A to select everything in here, Control V to paste and click install. This way we'll be downloading and setting up the Fabric server in this folder here. When we see this pop up saying it's successfully been installed, click download server jar if it says no valid server jar found and right below it we'll find use this command to start the server. All you want to do is click generate over here and then click done and close out of the installer. Inside of this folder here, we have our server set up. Before we continue with the server setup, you need to open up a new file browser, click at the very top and type percentage app data percentage and I'll be heading into .minecraft. Inside of here, open the mods folder if you have this, otherwise click new folder and create a folder called mods. When it opens up, all you have to do is drag the fabric API jar that we downloaded into here. Now we can close out of the mods folder as we're done setting up the client. It's a good idea to remove previous fabric jars if you have them in that folder. Now, heading back to the server folder over here, let's get to setting up our server. All you have to do is right click start.bat and click edit or of course you can open it in a text editor like notepad. All that we're going to do here is look at XMX. This is the maximum amount of RAM that your server can take. All you have to do is adjust this to better suit your computer. Hold Control Shift and Escape to open up your task manager and head across to the performance tab at the very top. The memory section over here is how much RAM you have in your computer. You'll see the total in the top right and over here, in use is what you're currently using, as well as available. What you're going to want to do is try and give the server as much as possible while leaving space for everything that's running on your computer right now, plus Minecraft, plus maybe a web browser or two, and then a bit of extra space on top of it for Windows and other programs to work properly. This remaining amount of space that we haven't yet used is what you can allocate to the Minecraft server. Anything from 2 gigabytes and upwards is usually okay, but the more you add to your server, the more it's able to do and handle and the better performance you'll get from it. Because I have a ludicrous amount of RAM in my computer, I'll set this to about 8G, the capital G standing for gigabytes. So at this point, save this file, close it, and simply double click start.bat. If you see an error about Java here, you'll need to go ahead and make sure that you have the correct version of Java 17 or above installed. You'll find a link in the description down below for that. Anyways, wait until it runs through to completion and then hit any key to continue to close it. You'll now see a whole bunch of new files here. What you need to do is double click on eula.txt and we'll be changing false to true. Hit Ctrl S to save and we can close out of the end user license agreement. Now we can go ahead and customize our server as we see fit. Inside of the server.properties file over here, which you can simply open with a program like Notepad, you'll see things like server port over here, which you may want to change if you're running more than one Minecraft server on your computer. Do keep in mind that you'll need to make a note of that for later on when you get to port forwarding if you're going to play with friends outside of your local Wi-Fi network. 
So let's go ahead and download some Fabric mods. Unfortunately, my go-to mod of World Edit isn't working for this as it hasn't updated to 1.18. So I'll need to go ahead and search for 1.18 Fabric specific mods. And of course, some of these are client side only. Hmm. Unfortunately, I seem to be out of luck with picking a mod that works as this was literally released today. That's fine. For now, I'll leave this as is. Usually when you're downloading a mod, head across to the file section and make sure that you're downloading a fabric compatible version of the mod. And of course, remembering that some mods are client side, some are server side, and some are both. You'll need to look out for fabric here as some of them are say forge only. When you do download a 1.18 compatible mod for fabric, of course, all you have to do is simply make sure to click keep and then drag the mod into your mods folder over here to install it. Then all you have to do is restart your server by closing it and running start.bat once again. Of course, if you like, you can delete start.sh as we won't be using that file. From here, your server is now starting up and you should be able to join it in just a moment. For now, I'll fire up the Minecraft launcher. I'll select Fabric 1.18 where I could have mods installed, play, understand, play, and all we have to do is head across to the multiplayer tab, click add a server and under server address, enter localhost or simply 127.0.0.1. Click done and your server should now be here. We can double click to connect to it and you'll see this chat window on the left hand side updating as I'm talking and playing in the server. Now, of course, I'd usually give a demo of the world edit here, but unfortunately that doesn't work for 1.18 quite just yet. Anyways, we're now connected and playing on our 1.18 Fabric server inside of 1.18 Fabric. Awesome. So now you want a couple of your friends to join. What do we need to do? Well, it's relatively simple depending on how you're set up. If you're trying to play with a friend inside of the same network as you, all you have to do is give them your computer's IP address and make sure you don't have a firewall blocking the game server from the internet. If they're outside of your local connection, then you'll need to go ahead and port forward Minecraft. Usually the port is 25565, but I did show you how to change that earlier. You'll find a link in the description below with a guide on how to do that. Assuming they're on the same network as you, or you'd just like to figure out your computer's IP to port forward to it, simply hold start and press R, then type in CMD, hit enter, and inside of here, type IP config and hit enter once again. Then look for the way that you're connected to the internet. In my case, it's ethernet adapter ethernet, and this IP address here is your computer's local IP address. This is what someone on the same Wi-Fi network will type in to connect to your server. And of course, if they're playing outside of your local network, you have to port forward 25565 or whatever it is to this IP address here on your router. If you have multiple routers, you'll need to port forward one to another all the way down the chain to your computer. It's quite a big process, but of course, I've made it nice and simple with the link and the guide in the description down below. Something I forgot to mention is that when you're done playing inside of the server console, the black window, type save hyphen all in order to save all of the player's inventories, the world, etc, etc. And only then once that's complete, you're able to close the server by typing stop stop and hitting enter. This way you'll safely bring your server to a close and you won't risk losing any data, corruption, etc, etc. But regardless, that's about it for this quick guide on setting up and joining your own Minecraft 1.18 fabric server. Thank you all for watching. My name is Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.